We've already made a video about climate change, in which we talked about how the Earth is warming up and how it's a huge challenge for mankind. This video will be more controversial, as it will discuss the climate policy or what we are sold for it. It doesn't seem to matter if you live in the USA, Canada or Europe. In most Western countries, similar measures are discussed. But many of these measures are not effective in limiting the temperature rise. Germany, for example, has abandoned CO2-free nuclear power for ideological reasons and is increasingly relying on coal-fired power, drastically increasing CO2 emissions there. Similarly, in other countries, there are nonsensical measures, which is why we want to take a critical look at them in this video. Climate policy is often not about finding the best solution against global warming. Instead, politicians are using the opportunity to reshape society as they see fit. There's a tendency toward a planned economy instead of a free market economy. In addition, there are clearly totalitarian tendencies to restrict the freedom of citizens. As already tested in the corona crisis, QR codes with your CO2 status on your cell phone could decide whether you're allowed to enter a store, a movie theater, or an airplane in the future. A personal CO2 account could also decide what you can buy at the supermarket, whether you can fly on vacation, or whether you can own a car, and, if so, how far you can drive it. Furthermore, you could be assigned a maximum amount of electricity, and if you use too much, it could be cut off completely. You should also eat insect burgers, 15-minute cities are discussed, the ban on building your own home is in discussion, and companies have to deal with ESG guidelines. Curiously enough, oil and gas companies in particular have a good ESG score. The central bank digital currency, CBCD, will be introduced worldwide, making every citizen absolutely transparent and privacy a thing of the past. Spend your money on the wrong things, and it could be easily sanctioned. The blowing up of the Nord Stream pipelines in the Baltic Sea in September 2022 caused billions of dollars in economic damage and was the largest man-made environmental disaster, releasing a record amount of the greenhouse gas methane. Despite the fact that the Nord Stream 1 was shut down and Nord Stream 2 had not commenced transporting gas, there was gas under pressure in each of the four pipes. It could discharge as much as five times as much of the potent greenhouse as was released by the Alaso Canyon disaster, the largest known terrestrial release of methane in US history. Scientists calculated that about half a million tons of methane was released, which is equivalent to about one-third of Denmark's annual CO2 emissions. Whoever ordered this should be prosecuted for war crimes and go to jail, said Rob Jackson, a Stanford University climate scientist. Seymour Hirsch published numerous details of how the attack was carried out in several articles on Substack, relying on anonymous sources familiar with the matter and blaming the US and Norway for the sabotage. Hirsch had been largely ignored, criticized, or denigrated as a blogger for his articles in major Western media, as if the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist is not a journalism legend who, decades ago, exposed the My Lai massacre of Vietnamese civilians by US troops in 1968. Adrienne Watson, a spokesperson for the White House National Security Council, denied the allegations, calling them completely and utterly false. Jeffrey Sachs, from Columbia University, also came to the same assessment as Hirsch and would bet that the US was behind the attack. Furthermore, he spoke about this act of international terrorism at the United Nations and asked them to investigate the matter. It's really astonishing how little interest there is in clarification. Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. If the Biden administration is behind the attack, everything they say about climate protection would be a mockery. Then in early June, the Washington Post reported that Ukraine was behind the attack on Nord Stream, using a small team of divers who reported directly to the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, General Valery Zaluzny. The CIA is said to have been informed in advance, more precisely three months before, about the action by a friendly intelligence service. The information was then shared with Germany and other European allies. The renowned newspaper refers to secret documents that the US National Guard Jack Texaria presumably shared on the chat platform Discord. 
If this scenario is true, then the only question that remains is, why was the attack not prevented? Due to political measures, the CO2 price per ton will continue to rise in the coming years. This will make driving and heating increasingly expensive, especially for the average earner. The exemption of private jets and yachts, the toys of the rich, from CO2 taxation is therefore incomprehensible. Instead, the average citizen is being harassed by more and more regulations. In Germany, the development goes particularly far. There, the government is trying to dictate how people should heat their homes and wants to ban the installation of fossil oil and gas heating systems starting next year. People are supposed to switch to electricity-powered heat pumps, while Germany has one of the highest electricity prices in the world. In addition, the last three nuclear power plants were shut down in April, further exacerbating the energy crisis, not to mention that Germany is currently in a recession. It is astonishing that in Germany the discussion is not open to new technologies that want to focus unilaterally on renewable energies. CO2 capture, underground storage, fusion energy and many other potential technologies are not mentioned in the plan so far. The biggest problem is the volatility of green energy and the lack of storage options. Green energies are not capable of the base load, the sun does not shine at night and there are days when there is no wind. But an industrialized nation needs a reliable energy supply 365 days a year, day and night. That's why the original plan was to use gas-fired power plants as a backup. But without Russian gas from the Nord Stream pipelines, this is difficult and poses huge problems for other countries. The newly awakened demand for liquid natural gas has overwhelmed Pakistan, among other countries, because European countries have practically bought the world market dry and many poorer countries are left out in the cold. That's why Germany now wants to bring old coal-fired power plants back online. Nuclear energy is CO2 neutral and plays a role in the considerations of many other countries. But in Germany, this fails because of the technological hostility of the Green Party, one of the three parties forming the government coalition. This is possibly the farewell of the fourth largest industrial nation, and it doesn't help the climate if goods manufactured in Germany under high environmental protection guidelines and low CO2 balance are now produced in Asia where environmental and climate protection hardly plays a role thus far. Potential adverse effects of wind turbines are not even researched, because no funds are made available, as the research results could bring unpleasant truths to light. The number of birds, bats and so on that fall victim to the rotors plays no role in the politicians' deliberations. The carbon footprint of turbines is also rarely known, as well as the dismantling of the rotors since they cannot be recycled. In Ireland, there's talk of culling tens of thousands of cows a year to meet the climate targets. In the Netherlands, the government wants to force 11,200 farmers to give up and many more to drastically reduce their livestock. The EU and California also want to eliminate the internal combustion engine. However, the charging infrastructure is not sufficient for this and it's more than questionable whether there will be enough electricity for e-cars in the future. Trucks have not yet been electrified at all and have been indispensable for transportation up to now. Another problem is the need for rare earths and lithium. One third of the world's rare earth deposits are located in China, increasing the dependence on the Communist Party, and lithium mining is anything but clean. If animal welfare, environmental protection, privacy, and many other things simply do not play a role anymore, this would be a highly alarming development. One problem is the media which brands legitimate concerns as conspiracy theories and prefers to blindly follow the government narrative. Many emerging economies also have huge coal reserves. Coal is a very cheap commodity, therefore these countries will not refrain from burning it to satisfy their hunger for energy. All these are not good prospects for the climate. What's your opinion? Do we see things too black and white? Write your opinion in the comments.